Hey there, it's the Range Ronin. Today I have a Sauer USA P8L to review. So, let's get to it. As far as the features of the SAR USA P8L, the first up is the fact that the SAR USA P8L is a semi-automatic, double-action, single-action pistol with a 4.6 inch ported barrel and 9mm, a 17 plus round capacity, and a stainless steel finish. Manufactured in Turkey and imported into the United States of America by SAR USA, the SAR P8L is a delight to view a wonderful pistol to handle, and a pleasure to shoot. It is a blend of style and functionality. With the many features that the SAR P8L has, it's difficult to know where to start. So I'll start with the front end and work my way around from there. From the nicely crowned and polished stainless steel barrel's muzzle, to the stainless steel guide rod, the beveled front end of the distinctive looking and functional slide, and the contrasting front sight dovetailed into the slide says some care was taken in the design of the pistol. The front sight is a simple ramp type with a white dot as a sighting point. Dovetailed into the front of the slide, the front sight is held into place with a very small set group, which means that the front sight can be exchanged with another. On each side of the low-lying slide are ports, four of them on each side to be exact. They are not only attractive with their rearward cuts, but functional, as they reduce slide mass and provide for the barrel to quickly dissipate heat. The top of the slide has two lightning cuts that allows, if for a short period of time, escaping gases from the ported barrel to be vented. The P8L stainless steel barrel is ported. Two small circular ports are cut into the top of the barrel at roughly the 1 and 11 o'clock positions and just over an inch from the end of the barrel. Exiting gases push the barrel down, reducing muzzle flip and recoil. The slide itself is very reminiscent of that found on CZ pistols in that it sits very low in the frame and has a full rail for maximum efficiency and accuracy. On most semi-automatic pistols, of course, slide rides outside the frame. The inside the rail's placement allows the bore of the P8L to ride just a bit lower than it otherwise would, providing a better alignment of hand to pistol for improved accuracy. The right side of the slide contains the serial number, and no other markings. The matte stainless steel finish is maintained throughout the slide. The ejection port is well cut and expended shells are thrown away from the pistol with a high level of efficiency. The highly polished chamber of the barrel stands in stark contrast to the slide's finish and a chamber inspection port provides a main to visually check for a loaded cartridge. The way I look at it, however, is if the pistol is in battery, I consider it loaded until the slide is fully open to where there is no doubt of an unloaded status. The external extractor on the right side of the slide takes care of the dirty business of extracting spent shells after firing, and it does its job very well. Slide serrations are evident on both sides of the slide at the rear, and are adequate for overhand pushing or pulling the slide to the rear, which is easily done despite the low slide profile. The two white dot nicely sloped rear sight is drift adjustable for coarse windage adjustment but both windage and elevation are fine adjustable as well. While sloped, the rear sight does have a ledge for racking the slide by an external means, like the belt, a hard edge, or even the heel of a shoe if need be. 
At the left rear of the slide, you'll notice an indented brown dot. That's a very important dot, as you will find out in the maintenance segment. The slide, as a whole, is nicely rounded and beveled where it needs to be. I'll take you to the interior of the slide in the maintenance segment, so let's move on to the frame. The frame is as well sculptured as the slide, and is a piece of work in itself. The left front of the frame contains the SAR USA logo, the location of import, and the country of origin in two places, in English and Turkish spelling. Only two external controls adorn the top of the frame, a slide lock and release lever, and a manual thumb safety, both of which are left side only. The slide lock serves to lock back the slide on an empty magazine, and also without a magazine installed, and has another function by providing the means to release the slide from the frame for disassembly, and conversely, prevent the slide from coming off of the frame after being assembled. The slide lock lever is long, serrated, and has adequate surface area to accomplish both locking and releasing of the slide. The left side only thumb safety operates in a conventional manner. Push up to the safe position and push down to the fire position. The thumb safety lever is of adequate area to allow moving into, off, and on safe positions. But moving the thumb safety lever to the on safe position is more difficult than moving it to the off safe position. I found it easier to use my support hand thumb to assist the shooting hand thumb when I needed to push the lever into the unsafe position, or simply use my offhand thumb or forefinger to move the lever to the unsafe position. Pushing the thumb safety to the off safe or fire position is no problem and did not entail shifting of the shooting hand to do so. The thumb safety can be pushed into the safe position regardless of the action's condition, double or single. When in the up safe position, the trigger is locked into place and will not release the hammer. When the pistol is in double action mode and the thumb safety is in the up on safe position, the hammer cannot be cocked. Conversely, if the hammer is cocked and the thumb safety lever is up and on safe, the hammer cannot be released. The P8L can be safely carried in what is known as condition one, cocked and locked. P8L can also be safely carried in condition two, hammer down and off safe, or hammer down and on safe, although I don't know of anyone that would carry in the latter condition. There is a hammer block that prevents the hammer from influencing the firing pin unless the trigger is pulled, and there is also a disconnector safety to prevent the hammer from falling forward when the trigger is released. I'll talk more about operation and how to safely decock the pistol in the function check portion of the maintenance segment. Just to the rear of the thumb safety, you will find another indented dot. For those familiar with the CZ line of pistols, you already know what this is for. If you're not familiar with the CZ line, I'll explain it to you in the maintenance segment. A highly sculptured trigger guard is squared, but not serrated at the front for placing the forefinger of the support hand when shooting the pistol. A nice hook at the front bottom of the trigger guard helps to keep the finger in place. The opening of the trigger guard is of adequate size for a gloved hand, regardless if the pistol is in double action or single action mode. The rear of the trigger housing is undercut, so that you can get your fingers tucked up nicely under the trigger guard. A very nicely curved and rounded trigger provides a nice saddle in which to rest the trigger finger when you are ready to fire the pistol. Double action trigger reach is right at two and three quarter inches while single action trigger reach is about two and one eighth inches. I'll talk about the trigger later, but for now, the trigger pull weight in double action is nine pounds, 13.4 ounces. Single action trigger pull weight is two pounds, 10.1 ounces. Both are measured as five pole averages. Just to the rear of the trigger is a prominent and serrated magazine catch and release button. The magazine catch and release button is left side only, with no provision for mounting it on the right side. Sorry lefties. 
When firing weak hand, I had no problem with releasing the magazine by pressing the magazine catch and the release button with my middle finger. I'll talk about the magazine shortly. Looking at the rear of the pistol, you can see that the slide to frame fit is just about flawless. There is a very slight side to side movement of the slide within the frame, but not enough to even be concerned with, as will be borne out later in the range segment. If you have not realized it by now, the SAR P8L is a hammer fired pistol, and I'll come back to that in just a bit. The right side of the frame is highly marked with Sarzel Maz P8L, serial number, and stainless. Just above the serial number on the frame is the caliber and serial number, nicely marked on the barrel's chamber. That little pin that you see protruding just to the rear of the serial number is the end of the disassembly assembly pin. It just happens to be part of the slide lock and release assembly. Keep that pin in mind, as its prominence will be talked about later. Before I get to the grip, I would be remiss if I did not mention the hammer. The hammer is a roiled unit with enough serrated surface area to provide the thumb an adequate surface with which to cock or decock the pistol. There are two methods of decocking the hammer, and I will talk about that in the operation segment. It's about time to get a grip on this thing, and such a nice grip it is. A highly defined beaver tail that keeps the shooting hand away from the hammer allows getting as high of a hold as possible without stepping over the boundary that leads to hammer bite. And note how well the grip panels are integrated into the frame at all points. The beaver tail blends oh so nicely into the serrated back strap that feels like a pleasure in the hand, conforming so nicely into the palm that you would swear the grip was designed just for your hand. You may have noticed that in the lead-in image, the P8L was shown with wooden grip panels. This P8L, however, is fitted with rubber grip panels that I must admit are very nice. The molded rubber grip panels have a thumb rest at the top and are nicely contoured into palm swells and are beveled at the bottom for resting the little finger that, incidentally, will not hang off the bottom of the grip unless you have unusually large hands. This is aided by a flare at the bottom of the grip frame. Bottom rear of the grip frame is rounded to aid in concealing the pistol, should you decide to do so. The magazine well has received a beveling treatment that aids in inserting magazines quickly. The P8L comes with two flat base steel 17 round staggered magazines that blend well with the bottom of the grip when fully locked into place. Each magazine can be disassembled for maintenance using a simple punch. Refer to the old nurse manual when doing so and observe all safety cautions. The front strap, like the back strap, is serrated to give the fingers something to press against to ensure a firm gripping surface. P8L, when gripped, whether loaded or unloaded, has a good balanced feel in the hand, despite the 40 ounce fully loaded weight. Note that an accessory rail Optic ready mounting capability or a threaded barrel are not present on this pistol. There is a SAR 9 SOCOM model that has all these things. This is not it. P8L is an old school baby with a modern twist. Before I get into maintaining the P8L, I'm going to pause for just a minute. Some of you may have already seen many similarities between the P8L and the CZ75B. Aside from the many differences, another SAR model, the 2000, is even more like the CZ-75B. That's not surprising. CZ-75 is a very popular pistol to emulate. Among the most highly regarded and regularly cloned pistols of Europe is the CZ-75, chambered in 9mm. Okay, I need to wrap up the feature segment and move on. Next up is how to maintain the SAR P8L. What you see before you is a field stripped SAR P8L. Let me explain how it got that way, beginning with a safety check. Point the muzzle in a safe direction 
and no fingers in the trigger guard. Remove the magazine. Lock the slide fully to the rear. Inspect the chamber and magazine well to ensure no presence of live ammunition. To begin the disassembly process, first ensure that the slide is fully in the battery by firmly grasping the frame with one hand while pulling the slide slightly to the rear with the other hand to release the slide stop. Then, slowly allow the slide to go fully forward until it stops. Now would be a good time to find yourself a non-marring tool, such as a dowel or a plastic-faced hammer. You can use the base of a magazine, but why would you take the risk of marring the frame of the pistol? Put your left thumb through the trigger guard, and with the other fingers, grasp the top of the front part of the slide firmly. Push the slide slightly back until the two dots on the rear part of the frame and slide are in line with each other. I told you that I would tell you what these two dots were for. Keeping the sights aligned, use a non-marring tool to push or tap the slide stop pin from the right side of the frame. The slide stop will be pushed out slightly from the left side of the frame. Remove the slide stop. Separate the slide and the frame. Note that the recoil spring and guide rod are non-captive. I normally cover these items with my hand as I separate the slide and frame. While holding the slide upside down, remove the recoil spring and guide. Lift the barrel up and out toward the rear of the slide. No further disassembly is needed for routine maintenance. Here is where I steer you to the owner's manual, as it has pertinent information regarding how to properly clean, inspect, and lubricate the firearm. Everyone has their own way of doing things, and materials to do them with. I would only caution about over-lubricating, as it can do more harm than good. Now, let's take a look see at components that reside inside of the pistol while it is disassembled. Also take a peek at that very nice stainless steel ported barrel. Okay, let's assemble the P8L. Knowing how to assemble the pistol is kind of important. Unfortunately, and surprisingly, the user manual does not tell you how to do that. So I will. With the open side of the slide facing up, 
install the barrel. It should be seated fully into the slide. Install the non-captivated recoil spring and guide rod assembly into the opening at the front of the slide. Press in until the back of the guide rod is flush against its seat in the barrel. Perform a final inspection to ensure that the guide rod is centered within the barrel. Assemble the slide and frame. Move the slide to the rear until you feel resistance from the recoil spring. Push the slide slightly back until the two dots on the rear part of the frame and slide are in line with each other. While maintaining alignment of the two dots, install the slide lock assembly. Push the slide lock straight into the frame while aligning the rear of the assembly with the cutout in the frame. Push with some effort, as there is a locking spring that is used to capture the slide lock pin. Once the slide lock is fully installed, release pressure on the slide. It will go fully forward into battery. Now that assembly is complete, perform a function check. To perform a function check, and, as my usual, I use a couple of snap caps to check functions, such as extraction, ejection, locking back on an empty magazine, and to give the firing pin something soft to impact rather than battering the firing pin stop. Can you safely dry fire the pistol without snap caps? Yes, it is safe to dry fire the firearm. Just remember that dry firing impacts the lifespan of pins and springs just like live fire does. If you extensively dry fire, I and SARS USA recommend the use of snap caps to reduce wear and prevent parts damage. Since I left off with the slide in battery and the hammer cock from assembling the pistol, this is a good place to start the single action and safety operation. With the thumb safety in the off safe down position, insert a magazine with several snap caps installed. Pull the slide fully to the rear and release to chamber the first snap cap. Place the thumb safety in the up safe position. Pull the trigger. The hammer should not fall. Push the safety into the down off safe position. The hammer should not fall. Pull and hold the trigger to the rear. The hammer should fall. While holding the trigger to the rear, pull or push the slide fully to the rear. The snap cap should be extracted and ejected. Release the slide to chamber the next snap cap. The hammer should remain cocked. Slowly release tension on the trigger. A trigger reset point that is both tactile and audible should occur. This happens almost at the fully forward trigger position. Completely release the trigger and pull the trigger once again. The hammer should fall and the pistol is now in double action mode. With the hammer down, place the thumb safety in the up on safe position. Pull the trigger. The trigger should stop and the hammer will not cock. Place the thumb safety in the down off safe position. Pull and hold the trigger to the rear. The trigger will travel its full double action stroke and cock and release the hammer. Slowly release the trigger and you will feel and hear the double action trigger reset point, just about at the point where the trigger is fully forward. Rack the slide as many times as needed to extract and eject any remaining snap caps. The slide will lock back on the empty magazine. The SAR P8L has no decocking mechanism. Therefore, it must be manually decocked. Decocking an empty pistol bears no safety issues, but decocking a loaded pistol means that safety precautions must be in place. There are two methods to decock the pistol, the SAR defined way and my way. After decocking many a 1911 pistol over the years, without incident, I prefer my method, but I will show you both methods. With both methods, the muzzle is pointed in a safe direction, away from the body.
With the sire method of decocking, the thumb of the support hand is placed between the hammer and the slide. The thumb of the shooting hand comes over top of the hammer and firmly pushes down on the hammer while the trigger is pulled. The thumb of the support hand is slowly removed from between the hammer and the slide as the thumb of the shooting hand slowly guides the hammer down to its resting place. With my method of decocking, grasp the slide of the hammer firmly with the thumb and middle finger of the support hand while the trigger finger of the sport hand is placed between the hammer and slide. While holding the hammer firmly, pull the trigger with the firing hand. The hammer will release. The sport hand fingers slowly allow the hammer to go forward into its rest position, with the forefinger being slowly removed from between the hammer and slide. You may have noticed that the hammer's resting position varies according to how the trigger was pulled. If you didn't, it does. Let me explain. If the trigger is pulled and held, the hammer will rest on the hammer block. If the hammer is pulled and released, the hammer will come to rest in a half-cock position. This firearm, the Beretta 92M9, and CZ firearms are perfectly safe in this position. In fact, it is a recommended hammer rest position, as it prevents the hammer from falling forward, even if struck and lessens the distance the trigger and hammer need to travel until the hammer releases. It also lessens the amount of trigger pull pressure a bit. The safety can be activated from this position, if so desired. While this hammer position does increase trigger free play a tad, it is widely used by many operators of these pistols. I am sure that by now you are tired of specifications, features, and maintenance of the pistol and wish that I would get on to shooting the darn thing. Well, that's what I am about to do. So, stop the presentation and take a break if you need to. But come back and watch how the SAR P8L and I partner up at the range. Chrome don't get you home is an old saying among bikers. In short, just because your scooter looks good all glammed out in shiny parts does not mean it's reliable. I feel the same regarding firearms. Just because you get oohs and ahs at the range from others when you show it, it means more that the firearm will operate with 100% reliability and accuracy. Based on the CZ75, the P8L should be as reliable, in theory. I am putting that to the test. With the weight of the pistol, the design of the pistol, excellent ergonomics, a very nice trigger, and a ported barrel, I am expecting a lot from this pistol, and I am seeing if it will deliver. More importantly, I am seeing if I can make it sing like Emmy Lou Harris, Alison Krauss, and Gillian Welch did with Don't Leave Nobody But the Baby in the movie Oh Brother Where Art Thou? With Remington 124 grain FMJ, Magtech 115 grain FMJ, and a few Sig Sauer 147 grain gold poppy seeds available to me, I went to work. Let's see if the P8L and I will be able to work together.
The SAR P8L is a full-fledged, full-size, heavy piece of work, and to carry the P8L, it's going to take a full-fledged, heavyweight holster. I did find one source that sells two holsters for the P8L and other SAR pistols, an outside-the-waist concealment IDPA holster and the SAR P8L OWB paddle holster. These holsters are available through Whole Guns, and I have placed a link in the description section. According to SAR USA, regarding the P8L, The exceptional stainless finishing is equally paired with features like a compensator slide with cooling channel, adjustable rear sight and interchangeable front sight. A masterful example of craftsmanship for the discriminating shooter. And, according to Wikipedia, SAR Somas Firearms Corporation, often referred to as SARS for short, is a privately owned small arms manufacturer based in Duce, Turkey. The company was founded in 1880 in the Ottoman Empire and is the largest small arms manufacturer in Turkey. SARS is the official pistol supplier and produces many of the small arms for the Turkish National Police and Turkish Armed Forces and exports firearms to 78 countries. SARS firearms were formally imported into the United States by EAA. SAR USA, founded in 2018, is now the exclusive importer and distributor for its firearms in the United States. It's just good to know where a firearm comes from, in my humble opinion. The SAR P8L is one fine handgun. It has capitalized on the popularity of the ever popular CZ-75 line of pistols, and has done so while introducing a few twists of its own. They are very nice twists, at that. The weight of the pistol coupled with excellent ergonomics and ported barrel, makes it one fine pistol to shoot. Current MSRP is around $589, and you get a lot of pistol for the price. A compact version, the P8S, is also available for those who prefer a smaller pistol at the sacrifice of seven less rounds in the magazine. As for me, I am impressed with build quality, handling, accuracy, and reliability of the pistol in the short time that I have had with it. I really would like to hold on to this one, but it needs to go back to its rightful owner, my son-in-law, who was kind enough to loan me this one for review. The P8L features a forged alloy steel frame, low profile adjustable rear combat sights, a manual safety, and slide serrations for reduced weight as well as a compensated slide with a ported barrel. The ground barrel and ergonomic grip makes this an extremely accurate carry pistol for a person who wants to be rid of those polymer pistols for a while. And you must admit that if any firearm was to be copied, being somewhat of a clone of the CZ-75, not a bad place to be. Well, my friends, once again, a chapter in the Range Ronin Chronicles is about to close. I hope that you found this review informative and somewhat entertaining. I hope that you will return for more in-depth firearm and gear reviews. Until we see each other again, stay safe out there.